Here in chapter two, you'll learn about price structure, which is the measured move. The measured move gives you trend direction as well as trend strength. You'll learn about back-to-back -back measure moves as well as a measure move within a measure move. The measured move is derived from the pivot to pivot trend. Measured moves are found in all markets and in all time intervals. Let's say price action starts from pivot low A and it rallies bar to bar up to a pivot high called B and then drops from B down to C and then rallies from C up till D. This price structure is known as the bullish measured move. This measured move is bullish because we have a higher low at C and a higher high at D. This structure only gets confirmed as a bullish measure move when price action rallies above B coming off of C because C is already a higher low. Now we need to have price action rally above B on its way up from C. Only when that happens do we have any sort of higher high in combination with a higher low. So if price action were to move up from C, the moment it goes above B right around here, yes indeed we will have a higher high with already a higher low. That confirms a bullish measure move right around here. Now why is that? Well if price action were to rally off of C and it doesn't go above B, we don't have a higher high and if all of a sudden it drops down from there we don't have any making of a bullish measured move. We don't have a higher high even though we have a higher low. Let's take a look at the components that make up the measured move. First we have this range A to B. This is the reference range. Next we have the BC range. B to C is the retracement of AB. Then we have this CD range. This is the reaction range. CD will be measured against AB. We'll be asking how big is CD as a percentage of AB. Is it bigger than AB or is it smaller than AB? It has been said that the CD move should equal to the AB move. But from my personal experience, CD has a tendency to be greater than AB. But for now, we'll say that CD will at least be equal to AB. The measured move not only tells us trend direction, it also tells us trend strength. We'll look at the BC move and determine how deep it has retraced against the AB move. We will use the 50% mark of the AB range as a guide. If point C retraces less than 50% before trading above point B, then we can declare this uptrend to be strong. But if the retracement at C turns out to be deep against AB, that is more than 50%, then we can say that the trend is weak. And if it's right at 50%, we can also call it strong. Now, let's look at a bearish scenario. Again, the depth of the retracement at C determines the strength of this downtrend. The retracement at C is considered shallow 
if it retraces less than 50 percent. And therefore, this downtrend is considered strong. The retracement at C is considered deep if it retraces more than 50 percent. And this downtrend is considered weak. In all markets, you will find back-to-back -back measured moves. Let me illustrate. Let's say you have a bullish measured move. A, B, C, D. You will see the market giving you another measured move following point D. Where the old capital C to capital D move in red now becomes the new little A to little B range. So here you see the first measured move and following it back to back is this second measured move. When the market is trending very strongly and you can tell because there'll be a shallow retracement here and or here there may be more back to back measured moves. Okay, let's take a look at the bearish scenario. You have a measured move going down. A, B, C, D. And following it is the back-to-back -back measured move. And we'll call that little A, B, C, D. The capital C to capital D range now becomes the new little A to little B move in pink that is a common leg of both measured moves. And if there are shallow retracements here and or here, there may be an additional measured move back to back. In fact, there may be quite a few in a strongly trending market. There may also be a measured move within a measured move as the market unfolds. Let's take a look. Here is the making of a bullish measured move. Off of point C, price may not go straight up bar to bar to point D. What may happen instead is that the market forms another measured move. What makes this a measured move within the measured move is the fact that this high here at little b is actually lower than the pivot high at capital B. If little b was to show up as a higher high instead, then this would simply be two measured moves back to back. Let's now look at the bearish scenario. As price drops from point C, it doesn't go straight bar to bar to point D. Instead, it forms a measured move within a measured move. Of course, the key point is that little b should not be lower than capital B. That's the telltale sign. Now, if this low here was to be lower than this low over here, then we would not have a measured move within a measured move any longer. It would simply be two measured moves back to back. Let's say price action moves from G up to H. How strong is that move? Well, that's determined by how the market unfolds. We'll run through some scenarios going from a strong to a weak situation. Now, this is not an exact science. This is just some pecking order. Other variables need to be factored in, such as the time range, which we haven't covered yet, but we'll go over in details in later chapters. If the move unfolds, just bar to bar, then that would be the strongest scenario. If the bars are long with very little overlap, that makes it even stronger. And of course, G to H is a simple price range. 
if there is an inside bar or an outside bar along the way that makes it a little bit less strong because now you have a little hiccup in the middle. If the market unfolds as a measured move but with a shallow retracement that makes it a little bit less strong because now you have a speed bump along the way. And if there are two measure moves back to back, now it becomes a little bit less strong because now you have two speed bumps. And if you have a deep retracement, now the market is a little bit weaker. If you have two measure moves back to back and the retracements are deep, now you're talking about a weak move going up to H. And if the CD move is not a move bar to bar, but broken down into smaller measure moves, that makes it even weaker. And the same thing goes for the CD move of the second measured move. In fact, this is the weakest way price action may unfold from G to H. Because these moves up here are not straight moves. They are, they are complex uh, price ranges. They zig and zag their way through. They are not moving up very enthusiastically along with uh, deep retracements at these uh, levels make this a very, very weak up move going from G to H.